looking for a project that we felt would um, be a great vehicle for Hayden and would also showcase Sarek very well as a director. So we wanted to find something that had a strong character-driven core to it, but also had its commercial potential. Для нас было просто понятная такая бойкая классная история, в которой был экшен, в которой есть и драма, и было понятно, что там хорошим актером будет что сыграть. In the script that we got, there was this relationship between these two brothers that was really compelling, and that was what we really wanted to focus on, and you know, really wanted to make it a powerful relationship drama set against this whole heist. Do you know what kind of street cred I got for having a brother who knows how to blow shit up? Yeah, well, come on. Both forgets fast, Frankie. So we'll make him remember. I got a solution. Я как как режиссер и вообще как в принципе как зритель, я вырос в 80-х, 90-х и отчётливо понимаю, что я приходил в режиссуру для того, чтобы делать жанровое кино, но, наверное, даже в первую очередь это касалось вот криминальных драм. Майкл Манн, Скорсезе, Брайан Де Пальма. То есть для меня это всё, да? This one was just really interesting to both Sarah and I, I think for different reasons, but but ultimately we we both have very strong relationships with our brothers. We work very closely with them. And uh, and so I think we both identified with that sort of relationship. I think that this synergy will also lead to the fact that we will see a modern reading of young people who are devoted to the celebration of the great cinematographers who are not yet old. Я каждую ночь перед тем, как уснуть, я правда думаю об этом, что это шанс, который бывает вообще, то есть уединить, а и, возможно, даже один раз в жизни. I think Sarek's appreciation of cinema and the, the caliber and kinds of movies that, that I've gravitated to and grew up on, films of the 70s, you know, it's a similar aesthetic, isn't so often done anymore. Sarek, I really think, is a is a phenomenal talent. Um, you know, he's very young, and his understanding of filmmaking and of storytelling uh, is is really so comprehensive. He does not speak English, <laughs> uh, but he has a great translator. And even if the translation was wrong, he's like, no, no, no. He knew that he wasn't saying it right. You know what I mean? There's a nice shorthand, though. I mean, I like it in in a way because, you know, filmmaking is a visual medium. That was one of the reasons that I wanted to do this movie. I love the script. The thought of working with somebody from another country who didn't speak our language, but yet is invested in the story and has a really unique take on it, I thought that would be really fun. And I have to say, it's been a blast. I like that the first words in English that Sadiq said is, I like. Yeah. It's a very cute, uh, way to express his approval to a take. I think Sarek is uh, I think he's a really uh, visual guy, you know. I think um, in his interpretation, it's just great because he, uh, you show up on the set and you can see exactly what he's going for. Um, and then he sort of lets you uh, do your thing. And if it's not uh, what he's looking for, you know, he'll tell you. But um, it's been great working with him because he, you know, you immediately get what he's trying to say. Because of the language barrier, his observations are, are are really unique, you know, and the things that he notices and the details that he picks up are different than the ones that I'm used to. Uh, and so the input that he has to offer as a director uh, has, has really been fantastic for me. I feel like we all complement each other very well. Uh, Sarek has been just a real pleasure to relate to. He comes at things with a keen eye towards um, towards directing and storytelling, but also from the producerial side as well. And I think there's a real trust between us. I think we both share a real passion for what we do. We both just want to make the best movie possible. And so there's a, I, I feel a real camaraderie with him. James, grab the phone. I play uh, James Kelly. When we meet him, he's uh, working as a mechanic in an auto shop. He's sort of at odds with the world around him. He had some trouble in his past that connects back to his brother again, but he's, he's trying to uh, get beyond it and, and sort of start anew. Uh, 
and he's making real progress, and he's sort of getting his life together, it seems. And then his brother gets released from prison and comes back into his life. And initially, it's sort of the the struggle as to you know, do I do I proceed forward with my life, or do I or do I sort of fall back into this relationship with with my brother? And ultimately, family wins. Oh, come on, Jim. Come on, man. It's been ten years. You could do better than that, no? You got some fucking balls showing up here, man. What's the matter, Jimmy? I came to see you. Huh? You didn't come to see me. Hayden is really great in this, and you know I care about him as a friend, and and I think that kind of dynamic plays really well in the film. Whatever he's doing, it feels very truthful, and uh, so it's been very helpful for me. And I think we've had we've had a very good rapport, and he's he's very open to collaboration. I felt like I had sort of a, a good grasp on James from the first time I read it. His situation in life right now is a struggle, and so I wanted to embrace that struggle. Um, and that was more just sort of internal work that I, that I had to do in preparation. We were talking about him, that I honestly asked him why he didn't film for 4 years in the film. And he said that I specifically took a pause because I decided that I needed to wait for the role that will be different. Выросло, наверное, уже целое поколение, которое уже и не помнит, что Хейден Кристенсен был звездный поинт. А те, кто помнит, для них он вырос. Это вообще новый путь, можно сказать. Our story is a tragedy. The, the relationship between these brothers hopefully will come to life in a, in a, in a real way that, that where people will really identify with this relationship. It's a very interesting study of, of how these guys come together to sort of plot this bank heist and then, and then it becomes this you know, real action movie where you're going to take down a bank, uh, but it all culminates in, 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 a, in a real tragedy. And uh, hopefully audiences will be affected by it. What's up, let's do this. Let's do this, come on. We really, when focusing on the brother relationship, we really built up the Frankie character and we felt like this role was such a compelling role and and required a really fantastic actor. When Adrian's name came up, we all got very excited. Я утром пришёл на работу и кто мне сказал, что возможно сегодня часа там в 4-5 вечера мы пообщаемся по скайпу с Эдрианом Броуди. Я даже подумал, что, ну, это какая-то шутка. Adrian has a certain quality to him that we felt would really um, lend itself to that character and after speaking with him and hearing his take on the character we were all really excited about what we felt he would do with it. I like heist films, I like, uh, you know, there's a lot of action elements that were present in the screenplay that I think are, first of all, entertaining and enjoyable to watch but kind of fun to interact with. Never happened to me and you against the world, huh? You wanna know what happened, Frankie? Yeah, you want to know what happened? Yeah, what happened? Yeah? I'll tell you what happened. You know, Frankie is a, a very complicated guy. He spent a decade behind bars in a state penitentiary. What that does to a man's soul is, is very detrimental. He's kind of likable and almost lovable, but is a failure. He's had a lot of damaged history, which I've made sure to incorporate into the storyline and backstory, and, and that both sets up my character, but, but uh, Jimmy you know, Hayden's character as well. Yo, you're not fucking Buddha. Yoda, you are. Fuck you, bro. <laughs> fuck you, man. Yo, fuck you, bro. У нас была серьезная драматическая сцена, где он плакал в кадре, и потом я смотрю, что они с Хейденом стоят вдалеке. И пошел к ним, и он облокотился к стене и говорит, ты знаешь, говорит, я хочу сделать кино, я хочу доказать, что для того, чтобы снимать великое кино, не обязательно иметь 300 миллионов долларов. The beauty of playing a criminal is that uh, <laughs> you get to play 
with all of those elements, both uh, on a truthful level, but also there are no real repercussions in your life. And um, that's, that's very interesting. That's part of the beauty of being an actor. Is he comes with so much, you know, once he's invested in a part, there's no halfway, like he comes fully committed. And the choices he's making with this character, I think, are, are so smart and interesting and really just make the character just pop off the screen. Uh, and and it's, it's really been a pleasure to work with him. Emily. Jordana, I think we were all kind of uh, fans of hers and she um, had a certain quality to her as well that we all sparked to as being very inherently how we saw Emily. We were just fortunate to, to get her and work out with, um, with her schedule here. She, um, she did a fantastic job with the role, you know, she was, we shot her out very quickly. I really loved um, the idea of working with Hayden Christensen. I'd never worked with him before and I'm a huge fan of his and I think his career has been so diverse so I was really attracted to that idea and then Adrian Brody signed on and that also really appealed to me. I wanted to do it honestly. Это не фильм, где Джулия Робертс в красном платье в рапиде спускается по роскошным лестницам. Это другое кино. То есть, возможно, кто-то не ждет от Джордана Брюстера такой игры, а она ее показывает. How much do I owe you? Because just tell me, please, no, 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 this was about business, this was about you fixing my car, no, so let me... Look, I don't want your fucking money, all right? She's a part of... Uh, James's past and they had this very you know one of the romances like everyone has this romance in high school that they they never forget <laughs> and they get back together later in life and it's sort of not doomed but it, it's it's sort of like kind of a doomed love affair in a sense he thinks that she's just sort of randomly come back into his life and it's it's a really nice thing for him uh, we later find out that the whole uh, thing was manipulated uh, by his brother and, and the other guys in this crew to set him up so that he has a reason not to run away. And, and, and they sort of hold that over his head as this, as this looming threat. James is a bad boy with a really, with a heart of gold. So I think that's really what attracts Emily. She, I think she, deep inside, she thinks maybe she can save him. She, she knows that, you know, Frankie's really at fault for, for what James is doing, I think is what Emily thinks. So um, I think it's it's really the core is her thinking maybe she can save him. What's up? Yeah, who's funeral? My character, his name is Sugar. You know, Sugar's more of, a, you know, he's a villain's right-hand man. You know, we conjure this thing about robbing his bank, and then, you know, there's two other characters that we feel like would be the perfect, you know, you could say, scapegoats for us to get to where we need to go. And um, I'm, I pretty just make sure just everybody's in line doing their job, you know, there for sugar watching his back, and eventually, eventually watch everybody's back, because eventually we all become a team to go to that one thing, but I'm more of the quiet guy, I don't talk much, and I always handle my business, basically. Come on, man, you heard him, give me the keys, man. Fucking amateurs. Sorry, Jimmy. And you know, Hayden had done a film a few years ago called Takers. It was a bank heist movie as well, and he had acted in that with um, a, you know several musicians. And when we were um, talking about the, the role of Sugar um, and the potential of having a musician play that role, um, Akon was very early on pitched by his agent. С Аконом мы встречались в Лос-Анджелесе, он был как раз после Хейдена. Первый, кто подключился к проекту. Как я понимаю, ему же нечего доказывать в той стези кому-то. И он принял предложение играть в кино. То есть мы встретились, и он сказал, да, я хочу ну, играть в таком кино. And we, you know, we got to see a little bit of the work that he had done in the past. And um, having seen him now act, he's a scene stealer. I mean, he's good in everything. He's like a really a pleasure to watch. Um, uh, so much so that we're trying to find more things for him to do. Akon is is uh, is a force of nature. Uh, you know, we were we were all really happy to get him involved in the movie. Um, but I think, I mean, myself, I was really blown away uh, the first time I saw him on camera. He's he's really really interesting to watch and uh, just has a natural presence about him. 
He's just very natural on camera. There's really no challenges, man. You know, everything that I thought would, might, might have would have been hard was actually very easy, you know? Because when I first came into acting, I thought I would have to memorize lines. You know what I mean? Like, that's the craziest thing. Like, man, I have so many lines, I'm going to memorize everything. But then you realize once you get on set and you're, like, locked into that character, them lines just come automatic. No, actually, man, I was surprised, you know, to be on the set, you know, with Hayden, Christian, Tori, you know, I mean, those guys are just very amazingly, like, great actors, and this is something that I always wanted to do, I mean, forever, so to be taking, you know, tips from these guys, watching them at work, you know, taking a piece of that and just kind of, you know, just sitting back being a student of the art. You know, those guys, I mean, you got Oscar winning actors, man. Like, not too many people come in and right off the bat start working with guys like this. So it was definitely an honor. Yeah. This is our bank. This is our war. I play a character named Ray. Ray is a guy who spent a lot of time in prison, and in doing so, he formulated these ideas. He also served his country. He was uh, he was in the Marines, and um, but when he gets back home, he gets into some trouble, and, and he um, starts looking at things a little bit differently. Мы мне кажется перебрали всех, кого только могли на злодея. Был очень много было вариантов, очень много актеров. And we were really struggling with trying to find the right person to play that role because he's got to be intimidating and smart at the same time. He's a thug from, uh, from prison, but you also have to believe that he could be the mastermind behind this, uh, this bank robbery. Take a look around, kid. What do you see? This country was founded on great ideals and principles. But they've all been ruined by the banks. You know, I've seen him. He, he does this show, uh, Sons of Anarchy. Uh, where he plays a bit of a bad guy, and so we had we had we'd sort of seen him do sort of you know something. We got a taste of it before he showed up on set. I didn't have a lot of time to prepare. I, I literally, um, you know, I got the movie on Saturday and, and had to get a plane, get on a plane that, that night. And but what he came with was so much more than what we'd seen him in before, uh, and so I think this role for Tori hopefully will be a, a really great thing. What's the first time that you see Ray? And in talking to Sarek about it, you know, what we wanted to establish was a control and a dominance over the other guys that um, are around him. Because Ray has a, he has a lot of intelligence. And that's also one of the things that attracted me to him. It wasn't just a, um, you know, sort of, uh, okay, I'm just gonna kick your ass sort of guy. He was a guy with an opinion, a guy who uh, had principles and, and who has morals. Ну и, конечно, когда он стал играть уже первые сцены, я понял, что, ну да, это, то есть, молодой Дензел Вашингтон. Я ему верю. I, I personally love the cemetery. I live very close to it, and I go there all the time and walk through it. And I always wanted to use it. I never found the right thing. And then I was thinking, what if there was a fight in the cemetery? It's like so scary in a way. Like you could end up as living there permanently if you didn't cooperate with these bad guys. What's up? Yeah, who's funeral? Hey, I think I might have nipped his ear a little bit. You know, just make it feel more real. Yeah, because normally, you know, you're supposed to fake it, but the first shot I had to hit him for real. I need him to really get into character. <laughs> I need him to fear me just a little bit more than normal. What was it like to bitch slap an Academy Award winner? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was fun. Now, you know, he, he was a, he was a champ about it, so it, it was uh, it was it was needed in the scene. You know, it was um, he was getting out of line and he needed to be put back in check. The fuck, man, she in a cut. We cool, right? Jimmy, tell me. I promise you, she's not a fucking cop, all right? Chill, man. Моя задача была максимально сделать так, чтобы этот фильм был... Я думаю, что как раз российский зритель хорошо меня поймет, чтобы он был не гламурным. Чтобы все, что есть в кадре, чтобы все абсолютно было естественно. I have a note from the director, Sarik, that for 
that thing he wanted silhouettes. <laughs> Working in daylight in a large exterior like it's a cemetery, I try hard to figure out how I could give him silhouettes. Um, we use long lenses and camera movement and shallow depth of field to isolate those characters from the background, I think. Hopefully I gave enough of that sense of silhouette to Sari. I thought the light was fantastic. It had a cool New Orleans vibe to it, and it, uh, it brought kind of a new level to the fight. So it was, it was really fun to do. Well, we're going to do a car chase. Сегодня это маленькая погоня, то есть буквально это больше такие кошки-мышки, он э, очень там дрейфует, просто обманывает эту машину, которая их преследует. Хейден's character, Хейден Кристиан, plays uh, James, uh, he's driving a, uh, a Dodge Duster, and um, there's been an occurrence in this warehouse, but he becomes, kind of in his circumstances, he becomes subject to being in the wrong place at the wrong time. And there's a security guard discovers the car here and decides to give chase. Вот это как мы доверились каскадерам американским. То есть как бы мы отдельно снимаем актерские сцены, а он параллельно сейчас будет снимать непосредственно машину. You're complicit in this. Welcome to the family. I think I got my driving skills from playing a lot of video games as a kid, and you know you play you know your racing games and the F Zero speed, speed racer. And that's where I got my driving skills from, Nintendo, really. Right now we're preparing to do uh, some of the burnouts. To, uh, we've got some new camera mounts and techniques that we're going to utilize uh, in this film to, uh, you know, to give it that extra up-close and personal experience for the, uh, for the audience. So they're right involved in it, and uh, we're tight on everything and uh, you know, tying all the, all the pieces together that are, you know, make it a really great fast action scene. You know, it's, it's interesting because a lot of the films that I do, I have to need to take the actors out and teach them how to drive, especially uh, manual transmission, especially in these tight areas that we're, uh, we're driving. And Hayden's very talented. Uh, he's, he's, he jumped right in the car and he's been um, doing everything he needed to do. And I, I basically just said, do you know how to drive it? Uh, shift and he said yeah and I asked his brother and his brother it's no big deal. И Хейден сел сам это стал делать и он он очень хороший водитель то есть он он любит машины и как бы и в этом сценарии он так скажем немножко повернут на машину поэтому вот надо дать дань уважения что человек не пошел спать в трейлер или отдыхать а просто как бы сел и сделал. I try to do as much of my stunts myself. You know obviously there's a there's a limit and uh, you know, they don't, they don't want you to get hurt or risk your safety. Um, but within the, the realm of safety, I, I try to do everything. Brother, fucking move! Let me fuck you down! Move, I'll show you fucking insane! Get down! 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 You know, he, he tries to get out of it every way he can, but they, they've got him, and he knows they've got him. I mean, he's, he's, he's screwed. There's nothing he can do about it. The original, obviously, the, the bank robbery portion of it is not, does not occupy as much of the story as this does. You know, one of the things that we were trying to do was take the core of it, which is this story of the two brothers, their relationship, their interaction with, uh, with Emily, who's kind of the moral compass of it, and these, you know, two corruptors from prison, played by Akon, um, and Tori, and um, and try to figure out how to, uh, while keeping the character-driven, you know, essence of the movie, expand it into a viable action film as well. And so, you know, when we were restructuring the script, there was a whole bunch of stuff that took place after we got out of the bank robbery, and really we just wanted to sort of explore this robbery as much as possible and do it in a way that is real and gritty and visceral. And so we had decided that 
You know, and we were using a couple of different films as archetypes. One was Dog Day Afternoon, and the other one was Heat. And so Heat definitely played a big role in shaping the bank robbery sequence. And uh, you know, hopefully it, it plays out well. We're going to have a lot of action in there. The look of our guys, you know, I, I feel is a, is, a, is a bit of a throwback you know, to the old Steve McQueen movie. But it's also something I think, you know, when you go online to YouTube, you know, robberies or that's what they're wearing for the most part. It's, you know, it's, it's a bandana to cover your face. Uh, so it's real and it's something that I think it'll click for people and they'll, they'll, they'll think that they're watching, you know, sort of the real thing, hopefully.